Merry Christmas. I was wondering how many candy canes could I dangle on one nail? Well, these, these are kind of long, these nails. Only one. I'm gonna make a super long nail to see how many I could hang off of one nail. Believe it or not, there is a technique for a super long nail. Join me for a fun Christmas video. Let's get started. I've made some long nails, but I've never made anything really, really long. So I thought, what would it take to make a really long one? I'm thinking like six inches. So I'm going to measure this from my cuticle all the way out is going to be about six inches. And let me see six inches for one form from the cuticle part is only three. So I'm going to need at least two of these forms. So I'm going to put two or three together. And like I said, I've never done it really this long. So I'm going to put them together and build a very long one in acrylic. I'm going to keep the donut in there. I'm going to take the one apart. That's taking out the center for my finger to fit in. <laughs> I've never done this before. And I want to kind of line it up. I don't really follow the lines, but I think the donut should be under, like this part should maybe be under so it doesn't pop out. And it's actually quite easy. Oh, let me get me glasses. It's quite easy to line it up when you put it under, if you're going to do this. So I'm gonna line up the center line as my most important line. That's what I'm lining up with. See that? Make it nice and straight because it is really easy when you do long nails, even if you're not going six inches long, to, to get it off a little. So you really wanna line that up. Now let's measure that. I don't think that is six inches. I think that's short. See, that's only four, so I'm going to need another form. I think when I first measured it, I measured it from the back part, and I should have measured it from that part. These are nice forms. I want to have a thicker form. I like these ones because they are a little bit thicker. The flimsier ones are a little bit harder when you're doing something like this. I want to cover the whole, this part. I'm going to cover that part completely because that's most likely the part to bend. So I'm just lining up. See this line here? I'm just going to line that up with that one and smack it down. pressing it in, and I'm going to bend it a little. It's easier to do it now. <laughs> this is for any length of nail when you're doing a shorter nail too. You really wanna give the paper a bit of a head start of where it's gonna shape to, so it knows where it's going. I don't wanna stick them quite yet together. So I'm just making sure that they're sticking to each other. You really want to get this right, that it's the foundation. And the longer you go, the more important your foundation is. The longer you go, the more important that you're really lined it up because sort of like hair, when you have a little curl in your hair, if you cut your hair really short, like an inch or two, you're not going to see that. But as it grows out more, you start to see more of the curl. Same with this. If you get this wrong, the longer it is, the more wrong you'll see. The, the wrong will be more apparent. This is feeling pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna break the end here. Now, the reason why this is important too is because I wanna file as least as possible. So I'm gonna make sure the application is pretty good because filing is gonna be a lot of work. So I'm gonna to try to make it you know, closer to being where I want it as opposed to filing what I don't want away. So I'm gonna to try to make it good right from the start. I'm just going to reinforce this spot with a little donut there. There's only two spots that's going to be sketchy if it's going to pop out. Okay. Going to line up the ends. Okay, it's ready to go. I just got to put it on the end of my finger. Let's buff my finger. I need some files. I think I put it in this one, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to get my medium file. And I'm just going to buff the surface of this natural nail. And I've got a little bit of acrylic on there. I do my nails rather often. So I'm going to, I always leave a little bit of layer on there. If it's not affecting the outcome. And I'm going to cover most of this nail. I'm going to do most of it in white. Because I don't want to put too many coats of gel on it. Because polishing that long of a nail. <sighs> I've never polished a nail that long. So it'll be interesting to see how smooth I can get it. So I'm gonna do it with white acrylic so that it really comes white right through. Maybe I can get away with one coat 
of the gel polish because I don't want a high profile on it. Okay, so don't forget your prep and prime. Let that dry for just a second, then pop your prime on. Now we want to put that long form on. Okay. It's a little bit heavier. I hope it just holds on okay. Okay, well that feels pretty. I think I'm gonna make it a little straighter though. I'm gonna loosen this a little and I'm gonna make it, so it's not gonna have much of an arch. And this is just for fun, of course. <laughs> I'm gonna balance it on the end of my, my acrylic powder here. So it takes the pressure off because I've got one person doing what is really needing to be a two-handed job. I should have taught you how to do this, cameraman. Uh, I was just thinking that, actually. I could come in there and hold the one end. I could tie a, a rope on the end and just hoist it up, you know? Mm, I think I'm getting it. I've never done this before, so I'm learning. My goodness, I can't imagine if a client asked me to do something. I've had some clients ask me to do some pretty long nails. This is crazy long. Oh, what would I charge for something? I just thought, what would you charge for something like that? Well, I have to decide on how long it's going to take me to do it. Of course, this is the first time I've ever done it. So naturally, it's going to take a long time. But of course, once I do it a couple times, I get better and faster at it. I'm going to do stiletto too, because I think it really lends to the shape of the candy cane. Oh, it'll break it filing. <laughs> You're going to want to be gentle. Okay, let's get some product on this bad boy. Okay, I'm gonna use my fast set. I don't know how much I'll need. There's like a teaspoon in there, a teaspoon and a half. We'll see. I'm gonna put pink on the nail plate. So when I take it off, I do have the pink on the nail plate. And then I'm gonna do white as it gets to the free edge all the way down. So I'm going to put, like I say, pink on the nail plate. I'm just going to get my Susie's pink tint down there. And then from here on, after I do that, I'm just going to continue with white. Doing nails in general is easier than doing it on someone else. There is quite an art of doing it to yourself. But when I do it, I'm not only doing it on myself, I'm also doing it for the camera. So I'm actually doing nails sideways. <laughs> yeah, it's a little awkward. It is awkward, but I've learned to do that um, with teaching actually, because when you come over to a desk to show somebody, you're not sitting in their exact spot. So you kind of have to, you know, I don't want them to move because I want to see it from their perspective. So I literally learned how to do nails sideways just so I could show them from their point of view. Okay, now I'm going to lay in the white. And I'm just gonna keep building this all the way, ooh, <laughs> all the way down to the end. That's a bit of a dry bead. It looks snowy. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> You're making an igloo, I think. <sighs> oh my goodness. so different because when you do nails long you have to compensate for that arch but I don't want a super high apex in there right yuck yeah right the positioning that I like... don't want that huge I mean I'm not gonna wear this what? I can't see me wearing this past this video <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. how am I gonna make dinner well, I guess it's I up guess to we'll me have today. to order out you I don't really want, um, what do, what do you make? I'm very good at making anything that goes in a crock pot or a Instapot, I should say. Those are pretty smart, actually. Mm -hmm. That's pretty handy. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I get my sides right because if I don't get that right now, that is gonna be a nightmare to file. Like, it's okay if it's a shorter nail, but to do this for a, you know, Six inch nail would be just a nightmare. Okay. Oopsie, I'm losing my balance on that thing. I gotta stay there. 
I think I'll lay down the foundation of it and then I will go back and add any arches and whatnot. I am having an issue with this particular. See that? I did it too close. Oh. It's too close. And it's not staying. So yeah, I think I'm going to get away with just maybe pulling it back or off. If I had a pair of scissors, I'd cut it, but I don't have a pair of scissors. I can get some scissors for it. No, it's okay. Okay, that's okay. The other side seems to be okay. I think we'll clear it on the other side. So there's one thing you want to watch out for. So forms don't really stick to each themselves so good. Well, they do, but it's just that it's a curvature. Mm. So on that curvature, yeah, yeah. it's popping up. They're not meant to, you know, right. they're not a lot designed of to be. It. You know, I've never done this before. <laughs> just trying something totally new. So I'm just going to keep going and just keep building it out right to the end. I can't hold it like I normally do. Very awkward. I just have to change the angle of everything as I have known it for the past 30 years. Falling off. <laughs> Too thin. <laughs> I want to make it a little bit runny so it's movable to bring down a form. It was moving. Yeah. Well, so much for trying to make it perfect that I don't have to file much. <laughs> right. That is out the door. Well, maybe um, rough edges is kind of nice. It'll look like a no. snowbank. We're not having rough. It's a candy cane. Oh. It's got to be smooth. I thought we could change the theme. <laughs> no. It's still Christmas, but... So I've already sold cane. it as a candy cane. I can't change it now. <laughs> okay. I'm also putting chrome, like red and green stripes. And with when you do chrome, you can't have no bumpy surface. It's got to be smooth. There's just no way of getting around it. I'm going to have to do it properly. I didn't think that through. I should have went for like a snowy texture so I could hide all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the is of a frosted cake or yeah see i could have done that mm -hmm. but i didn't think i just had an image of what i wanted yeah yeah I wasn't thinking about the technical aspect well, of getting it it's not gonna be shaped like a candy cane that'd be kind of no like a, yeah it's gonna be a stiletto i don't want a hook on my nail right I'll go that would be weird to file too like if it went like <laughs> yeah. i can't do that that would be a pain to file and it would look really weird. This is going to look weird enough. <laughs> but I think that would look really weird. We're getting there. It's getting there to the end. Yeah, you're almost there. Yeah. You can take I'm smaller beads. You'd be heartbroken now. if it breaks when you're filing it. Though. Oh, wouldn't that be a bummer? Oh. We're going to have to do it all again. We are making this nail. See how I'm just paying attention to this side? I don't even know what's happening on the other side. I'll only take a picture ah! from the one side. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a one-sided nail. Just a profile condition. picture only. Yep. <laughs> and he check out our reveal shots. One On shot one only. side. Yeah. I should just made an icicle nail. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that would have actually been better. A nice clear one. They would look. But good. I want and to paint been, the candy cane stripes. Uh, but, uh, but then it could have been curved and bumped. We yeah, already. I know, of, but then that's not really. That's just. Last year we did candy cane kind of thing. Uh, plus. Not off. like this. No, no, not like this. But halfway there. There and there and there. So I'm not going to give any instruction on how you would lay this down as far as technique because I'm just trying anything I can now to get this to get in there. All my technique that I've known and perfect it is out the window at this point. It's just like anything goes, you just get that in there. Anything you've learned so far that you do different? No, no, I think this is how you do it. Maybe with gel, but then with gel, the, oh, oh. <laughs> with gel, the issue would be getting that into the light. Like it's not gonna fit. Okay, 
it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to fix this here to make sure I have enough structure there so when I take the form off, it doesn't break. And then we can start filing it. Okay, so now we're ready to file. Just before that, I need to take this form off. This is where it gets a little scary, like, is it going to break? But it's pretty solid. It's, it's pretty strong. I can feel the weight of it, too. Let's just take this off here. I usually, same with any form, I pinch it and pull it below. But this one, you're going to want to kind of pull it all a little bit below. <laughs> wow. So pinch it really good so the sides release. So you're just bringing it away from the center, like the spine, you might say. Tricky. To pry it out of there. This is going to yeah. be a filming nightmare for you too, cameraman, because you can't get the whole thing in the shot. I have to be like a lot wider on yeah. the lenses. Yeah. Okay. So I'm literally just kind of yarding it out of there. Let me just lay it down here a little. See if I can. Oh, yeah. See, pull it a little bit. That's helping a little bit. Make sure it's released from this side. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just. Oh, look it. Wow. That wasn't too bad. Look at that. It's heavy. Remember I was talking to Cardi B's nail tech, Jenny B, and I was asking her with all those gems on it, is it heavy? This is just acrylic, no gems on it yet. I mean, nobody does it this long, but it is, it's not as heavy as you think, but it's heavy. Anyway, I'm going to file it up. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Wow. Okay, hey, I don't think I'm going to be able to use this um, electric file too much because see how it's going to be awkward. I'm just going to do underneath and at the cuticle and then I'm going to have to hand file the whole thing. So I'm just going to get rid of these little scraggly, just what I know needs to be gone. And this would be easier if you were doing it on somebody as opposed to yourself. See, I'm bracing. I'm actually putting my my focal point for my pinky on the end of it. Oh, you know, I could lay it down and that, invent a complete yeah, new that technique. that might be the way to go. Huh. I can't, I don't have a focal point to, for my finger, but I can make it work. Is this what metal work class would be like? Yeah, probably. The e file sounds so different on it. It sure does because it's amplifying through the table. <laughs> oh, okay. It's just the vibrating right through the table and the glass. Just, right? Gotcha. So it just sounds so different. Sounds like a weed whacker outside the window. It does kind of, doesn't it? Wow. Well, it's great. It takes the pressure off, you know, feeling like you're going to break it. Wow, I just feel like there's no finesse here. Okay, maybe I better take a look. Not bad. Let's go a little more here. That is a lot of dust. Now, I will say I have a fan that is right at me blowing all the dust away to keep it away from my zone, and you can see the heavy bits fall. So the fine di bits I'm not actually breathing in because I have a fan to blow it away. Okay. Now I'm going to file a bit of the top, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's really actually very awkward. I think I get to do this by hand because when you file accurately, you're much more parallel and I can't get parallel because the thing is in the way. So I'm going to do so the hand filing now. And I will use a coarse file on this because there's a lot of filing here. How am I going to do that? Okay, well, let's attack the cuticle. So I'm just getting in there and doing the cuticle. Now this will be a lot of work getting it exactly how I like it. So it's gonna take a while, but we're gonna just speed right through it. This is like Santa's wood shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it seems like. <laughs> This is where I have to be careful I don't break it because I'm actually using here so the pressure I could break it here. I have yeah, to be very, be very careful. I really don't want to build that out again. I'm just going to keep at it. 
I'm bracing it. If you want to know, I'm going to hold it with these fingers so I can hold it. It's about the best way I can do it. Just try not to hit my other fingers because they're already finished. So a couple of tips when I was filing, if you really want to do something like this, <laughs> it's all about leverage on uh, when you're filing, you're pressing hard, you don't want to snap it. So I found go to the edge of a table and then you put your finger part to the edge of it so the nail, the fake nail, is completely resting on the table. And then that way you can put your file, like make sure the finger is rested right at the edge of the table. And then you can take your file and go like that. So it's completely holding the nail underneath completely. And you can go across and get a, a finish, right? And then you can do the same for the opposite. Just make sure the nail is resting on the table. And then you can literally go like this. <laughs> this is what I was doing. And it does ensure to get a straight edge, which is what I'm looking for, right? Now, carefully, if you're turning it, and that's what I was doing, I was turning it, but just make sure the whole thing is resting. Because if you put a pressure point on a part that's not, it could snap. You can actually see the flexibility when you do turn it. But this, I found this very effective. So the point part is the most vulnerable, and I do want to point on it, but if I go too pointy, not to mention it is sort of a deadly weapon, um, I could break it. So I'm not going to go like super, super, super like needle point. But that's pretty pointy. Okay. So I finished it off nicely. I am just going to take my purple sponge and I'm going to go over the whole thing just to smooth it, bracing the bulk of it with my thumb and I can hold it with my other fingers if need be. Just give it a good once over or do it to the edge of the table like that. This is a spongy file, so it's going to be really giving. Go like that. If you're feeling any pressure on the nail bed, then you're bending it uh, too weird. Okay, and now it is ready for gel polish. So I'm just going to clean any dust out of the cuticle and through the whole nail. And also don't forget underneath, because when you're filing, it could be a lot that could collect under there. Now I will say gel polish would be easier to use in this particular situation because it's gonna self level and nail polish would probably dry when you're halfway through. <laughs> okay, so I am just going to paint this. Now this can be harder for you to get, Karen Man, because it is so long. Yeah. I really kind of just wanna get away with one coat. Curing it is going to be a bit of a challenge. I don't really want to just do it in sections and then cure it in sections because it won't be seamless then. Right. We really want it to be seamless as far as the application of the gel product goes. Now, any challenge with a gel polish is making sure that there's no hairs or dust or bits in it and somewhere they just float in the air sometimes, so. This is a large surface for any type of issues to happen. So pretty good odds we're gonna have a little bit of that issue, but it's covering quite nicely too. It's just gliding on. That's what I love about gel polish. It just glides. So check your sides, make sure that you got the sides because when we do the stripes, um, we're gonna wrap it right around to make sure it does come down on the side. I might do two coats, you know? Okay, flip it over to the other side and make sure I'm going to do this kind of vertical. <laughs> Careful you don't hit the camera. <laughs> so, uh, honestly, this is why I did white acrylic underneath. So it really just looks like a white solid all the way through. Right. That makes sense. I mean, it's ridiculous, but I got to tell you, it's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Okay, so I can see little things and it could be dust or it could literally just be that the acrylic just isn't as smooth as I would like simply because of the filing challenges. But it's pretty good. 
I might do it twice just because the cuticle could use it. Okay. I'm kind of happy with that. Okay, so nuking it. Oh. Forget about it. <laughs> oh, that's where a real polish might have been. A, that would have been an advantage. I know, but it. it would take forever to dry and real yeah. polish. I'm going to put gel on top of this and the stripes won't stay. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to put in there what it'll take. And then I'm going to take off the bottom and then move it to the bottom half of the nail and just kind of nuke it in sections. Okay, so now I'm going to take the bottom off. And you know what? You could even put the reflective bottom down there, actually, because it's all part of the curing process, I learned. That works. It's really handy when you can take the bottom off. Okay. Is that all cured, do you think? Yep. I'm going to, though, put another coat on it because the cuticle's really wimpy and I don't like that. So bear with me, I'll put another coat and then we can start decorating it. Okay, I'm just gonna put a top coat in between, but I'm gonna start with the free edge so it doesn't flood into the cuticle at all. That'll be the last thing that I apply. So I'm gonna just work my way up. Just as a side note, when you're doing a top coat, don't use your finger to clean up the edge. That can lead to allergies. Okay, we are ready for stripes. Okay, so now we get to paint the stripes on there. These are the candy cane stripes, so I've got Nail Kemi Red and Green. They're beautiful Christmas colors. They are perfect for this. But it's all in the tools. Finding the right color and then making sure you have the right brushes for this. I'm just going to paint some diagonal stripes just to mimic the candy cane stripe. I just got a whole bunch of brushes. I'm just going to, I'm not necessarily going to use them all, but I'm going to bring them out just in case I want them. You never know at the last minute you might just have to have one of them. Okay, before I paint it, I just give it a nice light buff with just a really, really gentle file. Just helps the paint, I think, grip onto it a little bit better. And when I do the chrome, it'll help remove the chrome a little bit easier too. It's a very, very light buff. I think this is 300, 4,000 on one side, so it's a 300 side that I'm using. Okay. And once again, just give it a good clean. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, it sure is. It is cool. But it's weird. Okay, got myself a good brush. I just picked this up at the art store. I'm going to make sure I have a cotton pad that is soaked with alcohol because we're working with gel. And I'm just going to start painting the stripes. So the first one you lay down is going to be the angle that you're going to want to be consistent with. These are your candy cane stripes. Beauty of working with gel, you don't like it, you can take it off. You can also erase your mistakes. I'm just checking the angle, and honestly, I think that's a really nice candy cane angle. Like I say, from here on in, that'll be the set angle that you're gonna do for all of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay them all down, thick and thinner ones. And if you make a boo-boo, I'll just tell you this now because I'm just going to speed this part up. But if you make a boo-boo, just so you know, there's a boo-boo, let's say. Just get your alcohol. Saturate the bristles. I'll make sure there's no other color in there. <laughs> and then you can literally just wipe it away. Okay? So don't worry if you make a boo-boo. It's hard to not make a boo-boo, especially when you're working with such detailed stripes and as soon as you get ones that you do like you can give it a nuke and just sort of set it if that's what you want just so you don't bump into it I'm now just just going through and making sure that that is really really sharp
Look how long it is. So I've done all the stripes, but I decided to chrome them. So I saved one to show you. With chrome, you've got a chrome top coat. So it's your color, top coat, chrome, and then your top coat again. So I've just put a little bit of top coat in a dish. And you can see the difference. See the red right there? That's the only one that doesn't have the chrome on it. You're really good at doing your lines. I did all that good work to do good, you know, sharp lines, but now I have to put the clear on it. So just do it a little bit inside of it in case the gel spills over on the outside. You want it to be sharp. And you know you the lines that you did before, they were really sharp. So I'm just going to put that top coat in there. Let it level out a little bit because Chrome likes it to be nice and smooth. I did that with all the other ones. I just wanted to show you the last one. Okay, that feels pretty good. Let me just double check this side, get it down there. Sorry, you probably can't see this part. I'm just making sure it's everywhere in that little part. Then I'm, oh, this is what I discovered too. See this lamp? <laughs> just make sure you understand where it is. It's right there. I'm gonna put it right down the center. This was way easier and quicker because then I can go like this just because of the shape. So this was way more easy. So I'm just gonna give that a bit of a nuke and then we can chrome it. Okay. Now I'm using Chrome from Joy Me. I really like this color. It's beautiful Christmas. And then you literally just Chrome sticks to a top coat. Oh, I better hold it. And you just rub your Chrome on. Try to rub it with just within that area. Any overspill, you're gonna have to clean it before you top coat it. It's kind of neat to leave it without the top coat, but you can just for aesthetics for a photo maybe, but um, longevity or wearability, the chrome will come right off if you don't top coat it. So you just wipe it off the green where it rubs on the green there? Yeah. It might rub off the little bit of the chrome that's on the green. See how much it nicely cleans up? And then try your best to get that little spot in between. You could do a brush again. I'm gonna just try to do it like that. Just trying to get in between those two to clean up. Yep, that looks good. Now it's time for the reveals. I don't know if you noticed, cameraman, but you see the pillow back there? I do. I saw it in the other video. I video posted too. a picture on my Instagram or about that video and a Instagram viewer named Bling That Thing, I think she said. She says, oh, come on, Susie, turn that thing upside down. I had it on the nice side. Mm. And she suggested that I flip it on the naughty. So that's for you, bling that thing. Anyway, I love doing this. This was, okay, let's see how many candy canes we can fit on here now. Oh, okay. This is what I wanted to see. They'll probably all fall off. <laughs> let's get this a little bit closer. <laughs> Talk about heavy. Now it's getting heavy. <laughs> Okay, so I've got to measure this too. I want to see how long it is. Oh, it's getting really heavy. I'm going to have to hold it. Oh, I hope it doesn't break. It's a lot of pressure on my nail bed. Mm. I could fit one more on there. <laughs> I could fit one more on there. Can you put one more on there, cameraman? You could, but you'd have to like okay, hold it. Okay, I'll right? do it. Hang on, I'll do it. It'll probably break some more from the weight. No, I just let it. I just I put the weight on there. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do it. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Look at that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen candy canes on there. That's how many I can get. I can even get one more because I'm holding my finger on the other end. And it's heavy. <laughs> anyway, that was fun. I'm not gonna keep this on for very long, but look at that. Oh, let's see how long it is. Before you go, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna show you how long it is. Look at that. It's six and a half inches of a fingernail with a can. <laughs> I want to keep it so I could do different designs, but it's not very practical for when I, for life. <laughs> it 
Anyway, that was fun. Thanks for indulging me. My candy cane long nail first and probably only. It looks weird with the rest of the nails too. Could you imagine? <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining me, you guys. Have a great Christmas.